for this uh, very inspiring talk. Uh, I'm Benjamin Sultan, I'm a researcher uh, in France, in the south of France, in Montpellier. And uh, I will uh, mainly give some example of what uh, Alex just shown about climate change impact uh, on crop uh, on crop productivity on crop yield, but mainly with a focus in uh, in West Africa and uh, on rainfed crops. So it's quite limited, but uh, it could be very important for food security actually. So uh, Africa is particularly exposed to a climate variability and climate change as well. You have one third of the population facing widespread hunger and chronic malnutrition, and you have also people uh, whose livelihood is heavily dependent on traditional rainfed agriculture. So there is a high vulnerab vulnerability. And climate change could pose an additional burden in achieving food security uh, goals uh, in, the, in, the, in the region. So um, indeed, uh, when you have additional increase in global warming, when you have changes in hot and cold temperature extremes, and uh, also changes in precipitation, you could have a strong impact on crop yield. And you have here projected changes in, uh, in Africa with uh, an increase of four degrees of global warming. And you have uh, on the, the left annual maximum temperature, annual minimum temperature, and on the right annual total precipitation and maximum daily precipitation. And you can see that there, there are uh, strong warming in, in, in Africa, especially in continental Africa. And uh, it's, uh, it's very true in the Sahel. And you have also changes in, uh, in the rainfall. But uh, these changes are not uh, that uniform. If uh, you look at annual precipitation, you have uh, part of uh, Africa, especially the south of uh, Africa, but also the western part of, uh, of West Africa which is uh, drying with the increase of uh, temperature. And, uh, and some other parts who are uh, on the opposite uh, with uh, a lot of more rainfall in the future. But uh, you have a common feature in, uh, in, uh, in Africa, which is the increase of the extreme uh, rain, rainfall with uh, the, uh, a higher number of uh, maximum daily precipitation which is, uh, could also be a, a problem for, uh, for crop yield. So this change in climate, especially the warming, as, uh, as been shown by, uh, by Alex uh, previously, could lead to negative impact on crops, especially because of this higher temperature, which could shorten crop cycle length. So uh, with this index of growing degree days, if you have some more temperature, you have um, uh, less time for for crops to uh, to grow and to uh, and to produce uh, biomass and yield, and you could also increase water stress with this higher temperature, which is overall detrimental for crop production. And uh, overall, we could expect less yield, but also more viable yield under uh, under a, a warmer climate. So, as an example, this study shows the distribution of crop yield under um, uh, present and future uh, climates so based on semi-5 uh, simulation and, and uh, it is um, uh, it is crop from uh, the, the crops we use here are millet and sorghum which, which are the, the 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 main staple food crops in the region um, in west africa and these are anomalies given from uh, a crop model so you can see that the distribution is shifted uh, in future uh, climate under uh, lower yield with uh, also a, a higher distribution, which means that uh, you have more viable yields under climate change. So such kind of projection, we design a portal uh, with the, the, the National Med Service in Senegal to uh, disseminate such kind of uh, projection of climate, but also projection of uh, crop yield that could be used uh, for decision making or at least for, sens uh, for sensibilization about climate change impact on crop yield. So you have here the, the, the portal we designed with um, colleagues in, uh, in Senegal. And uh, you have, uh, for instance, here different kind of indices we put on the portal with uh, temperature, with precipitation, 
but also a projection of crop yield. And uh, you have ear evolution of maize uh, under uh, different uh, scenarios uh, of climate change using uh, semi five scenarios. And now we are um, working on extending the, 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 the portal with semip 6 data, but also uh, to, to develop uh, the, the portal to uh, other countries. And uh, here we have an example of uh, what uh, we are doing in, uh, in Burkina Faso as well. So climate change is not, uh, climate change and climate warming is not only in climate models and in future scenarios, but it's also visible in climate observations. We have here an example of what uh, we have in the last IPCC report in the regional fact sheet in Africa. And uh, you have uh, already in the observation, mean temperature and hot extremes that have emerged above natural variability. And you have also uh, some rapid changes, uh, some faster changes that uh, we have on the global average with also observed increase in hot extremes and um, and, uh, and uh, rainfall extreme as well. In this slide, you have uh, the observed temperature in the Sahel um, since, 19, uh, uh, since 1950, during the hottest months, uh, April or June, and in annual mean uh, on, the same, uh, on the same graph. And you can see that there is a clear increase of temperature, especially during the hottest months in April, where there is uh, a plus 1.4 degrees warming since the 1950. So it's quite important, uh, especially um, uh, when you look at the, the, the hottest months during uh, uh, just before the, the, the monsoon season. So now the question is uh, how uh, such change in terms of temperature has already affected uh, agriculture. And uh, this is not an easy question for at least two reasons. First, uh, when you look at productivity uh, time series, there is a lot of variability and trends in uh, crop productivity time series that are not due to uh, change in um, change in, uh, in climate, but that could be due to management change, that could be due to a lot of factors that could influence crop yield by the end. And second, there is also a high natural uh, variability in a historical climate, especially in Africa, and sometimes it's very hard to, uh, to, to attribute the, the changes in terms of, uh, of, uh, of, um, of anthropic global warming. And as an example, you have here an example of such uh, variability in Africa with two recent climate extremes in Africa, which had a strong impact on food security. And these two events were reported by the World Weather Attribution Initiative in uh, Madagascar. And for the first event, um, the Madagascar was facing a severe food crisis uh, exacerbated by exceptionally low levels of rainfall over 2020 and 2021. But the attribution analysis based on past data and climate simulation concluded that factors other than climate change were the main drivers of this food insecurity. And in fact, this high, uh, uh, this, uh, high drought belongs to the natural variability of the climate in the region. And another example is the, the, the increased uh, rainfall associated with tropical cyclones. And on the opposite, uh, the, the attribution study concluded that uh, there is a, a close link with climate change uh, in the region. So you have a, a high viable uh, climate and it's very hard to, to look at the, um, the, the cause uh, the, and to attribute it to climate change. So to answer this question um, and to assess the historical impact of human activities in West Africa, we designed a modeling experiments based on two continents. Um, the first component is based on a climate model to simulate historical climate with and without uh, anthropic influence, and a second component based on crop modeling to assess if anthropic warming has already affected crop yields in, uh, in, in West Africa. And so considering climate simulation, we used uh, a global model, uh, an atmospheric uh, general circulation model forced by uh, SST, by sea surface temperature, 
And the model was used for two kinds of simulation. First, a factual simulation with actual conditions that are influenced both by human activities and uh, natural forcing. And then a counterfactual uh, climate uh, simulation with uh, the non warming uh, uh, climate, with a pre industrial climate that lacks, in fact, a human influence on a global system. So here, the, the, the sea surface temperature and sea ice were uh, detrended so that we could remove the influence of, uh, of uh, CO2 of human influence in the simulation. And uh, by the end, we got 60 years of IGCM uh, simulation and uh, with an ensemble member of uh, 100 uh, simulation. And so this uh, data were interpolated uh, at the 0 0.5 resolution and uh, also uh, bias corrected so that we could use the different variables to force a crop model. And uh, this kind of simulation were already used to assess uh, changes in terms of, uh, of temperature in different regions of the world. Uh, in, the, in a paper uh, made by uh, Shiogama et al. and also Izumi et al. in 2018. And you have here a result with historical and uh, observation in black. And you can see that uh, the simulation of the model are, uh, are quite close when you use the, 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 the simulation using uh, anthropic uh, emission of greenhouse gases. And you can also see that uh, the simulation have been used uh, for assessing climate change impact in, uh, in, uh, in the, at the global scale. So using the Sigma crop model, so this uh, study based by uh, Yuzumi et al, investigated the change in terms of average yield associated with climate change from pre-industrial levels. And in red, you have areas where climate change decreased yield uh, on the historical uh, in, in the past. And on the opposite, you have in green the areas where climate change increased yield. And you can see clearly that the areas where the productions were higher uh, because of climate change it's uh, very clear in uh, northern latitudes in Europe and uh, in, Rus in, uh, in, in Russia, also in Canada. But there, uh, you can see in the tropics in, uh, in West Africa and in India, in, uh, in Southeast Asia, there is a clear decrease of crop yield because of, uh, of human activities. So what are the impacts of human activities on West African climate? So we uh, have a look in the simulation um, uh, and uh, we compute several user relevant indices um, that could be very uh, important for uh, crop productivity by the end. And uh, these indices are part of a longer list we established during meeting with stakeholders in Senegal and in Burkina Faso. And um, we then compare these uh, indices so that are um, annual mean temperature, EV rainfall events, and rainfall intensity, we compare these indices uh, between the two simulations, so with and without greenhouse gases. And what we found is that uh, this, uh, most of these indices were uh, significantly different from one simulation to another, especially annual mean temperature. And you have here an example where you show, uh, I show you a time series of annual surface temperature in average over West Africa in the observation. So it's the observation from the data from CRU, uh, from crew data. And uh, you can see that uh, there is uh, a clear uh, increase of temperature with an average temperature of uh, 27 uh, degrees uh, over the last 10 years of the simulation. And you have now in blue, the counterfactual simulation. And uh, it is clear from this simulation that uh, we could simulate the, the internal variability of the, the, the temperature, but we missed the increase of temperature and also the, the, the mean temperature is completely different from what we observed in the, in, the, in the previous years. And now it's the factual simulation when we introduce now the effect of uh, anthropic greenhouse gases in the, in the climate model. And you can see that now we are very close 
to the observed uh, temperature. And uh, we also have um, a very close uh, average of temperature over the last 10 years of the simulation. So now we, uh, we have done the, the same for the, the same comparison, but for mean temperature, total rainfall, very hot days, and very heavy rainfall. And what you can see is that uh, it is very clear that we have differences in terms of mean temperature, but uh, we have no differences in terms of total rainfall, which means that we cannot see any signal of uh, increase of greenhouse gases uh, in the in the in the in the changes in terms of total rainfall, but we have some changes in terms of very heavy rains in the in the model. So we have significant changes in terms of very heavy rains, which could also have an impact on crop yield. So now, what are the impacts uh, in terms of crop yields? So um, we use the 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 the, the the atmospheric uh, GCM outputs to force uh, two crop models that are uh, SARA and SIGMA. So SARA was developed in uh, Montpellier and SIGMA was developed in, uh, in Tokyo. And uh, they were used to simulate crop years using these two uh, simulations, the factual and the counter factor simulation. And we have done uh, 100 simulations uh, for each. So uh, let me briefly uh, introduce you the, the, the two crop models we use. So we use the, the SARA model, which has been developed uh, by CIRAD, and it combines a water balance model, so simulating water demand, soil water availability, but also uh, a carbon assimilation and partitioning model with radiation use efficiency with phenology. And uh, this model were used, uh, was used several times. And it seems that uh, when you compare it to uh, FAO yield, it captures quite well the variability of crop yield in the, in the region. And we have also used the, um, the Sigma model, which was developed by NARO in Japan, including much more processes than uh, what we have in the, in the, in the SARA model. So you have the, this growing degree days uh, uh, simulation, um, but you have also a different kind of uh, effect, especially the, the, the CO2 effect on crop yield, uh, but also a lot of uh, different kind of processes that we don't have, such as the, the nitrogen deficit, heat waves, and uh, excess water that have been considered in the model. So uh, we have first validated the two uh, crop models compared to the uh, observation. Uh, you have here uh, the two simulations of millet and sorghum. For the two uh, crop models, in blue, it's the SARA model, and in red, the, the, the sigma model. And you can see that you have one model doing a good job in terms of simulated the annual trends. So it's the, the, the sigma model, and another model is the SARA model, which is doing a, a better job in simulated interannual variability of crop yield. So now these maps are the, the, the geographical impact uh, of, um, of crop yield associated with historical climate change relative to a non-warming counterfactual condition. So when you have um, uh, negative values, it indicates that you have a yield loss due to anthropic warming. And what you can see is that you have a, a high crop yield losses especially in the, um, in the north of, uh, of West Africa, in the, in the, in the Sahel, uh, which is uh, the, the same in the two crop model. So even if we have two very different crop models, you, you, you have uh, kind of exactly the same geographical patterns with crop yield, yield losses due to uh, increase of greenhouse gases and to uh, historical climate change. And these losses are estimated um, uh, between 10 and uh, 80% uh, for millet, and between 5 and 50% of sorghum, uh, depending on the crop model. And it could be very important for some countries. For instance, if you look at uh, Niger, or if you look at uh, Senegal, we have uh, very high losses 
because of the increase of uh, greenhouse gases and, and its impact on climate change. So to conclude, uh, I'll show you some example of the impact of human activity on regional climate. So in Africa, we have a warmer climate with more intense rainfall, which could have negative consequences on agricultural production. And it's already visible when you, you when we perform the attribution study. So without anthropic warming, crop yield could have been higher in West Africa. So between 6% and 50% for sorghum and between 11% uh, and 80% for millet, which is quite high and could have an impact on food security. And even if we use two different crop models with two, level, two levels of complexity, uh, we have uh, a kind of a very similar uh, effect uh, of climate change on, on uh, crop yields, which suggests that we have a common mechanism which might explain this uh, common behavior. And uh, we suspect that it's likely the increase of the evapotranspiration led water deficits and also the short term crop duration induced by the warming. And since the most optimistic climate change scenario do not lead to a warming uh, below uh, 1.5 degrees in Africa, so uh, we expect uh, further crop production losses in West Africa. And uh, it's uh, clear that we need to, to, to think about uh, the, the most effective adaptation methods uh, uh, in the region that will be really critical. Uh, so I think uh, I'm done and I'm open uh, for questions if you have. Thank you very much. All right, let's give Benjamin. Thank you, uh, Benjamin, that was, that was great. And we, we had a discussion just yesterday about the ways that we might assess things like losses and damages and you know the, the impacts uh, attribution, detection and attribution world has become much stronger on the climate side in recent years. Uh, but getting to the impact side, I think your study with, with Toshi is one of the earlier ones that's really doing that. So uh, very exciting to see. Any questions in the room for what we've seen? Yes, uh, let me get the microphone. And, and just for Benjamin's sake, could you please uh, just say your name and, and institution? Um, hi, Ben. Uh, I'm Jean from Australia. I have a couple of questions about your presentation. Um, yeah, the first question is, is you, you mentioned the 100 uh, in Zimbabwe members. So I just wondering the in Zimbabwe member is from the different uh, climate model or different uh, initial conditions. So I'm not clear there. The second question is, uh, your work is under which emission scenario? And the last uh, small question is, uh, how much confidence you can put on your simulated results? Uh, thank you for the question. In fact, uh, the, 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 100 member, the 100 simulations are perturbation of initial conditions. And so uh, we try to look at the, the, the effect of internal variability of the model and it could be quite high, so uh, we need to uh, to uh, to to uh, to re-simulate the, the the model one hundred times. But we believe that, uh, in fact, if we want to really sample the efficiency, the the the, the uncertainty, maybe uh, something like twenty to thirty simulation would be uh, would be uh, useful by the end. And so the the the. The question about the uncertainty of this simulation, I mean that uh, it uh, it is related to the portal we have done uh, or uh, or to the number I give uh, by the end. I, I, I don't capture very well your uh, question. So it's about uncertainty of the whole uh, study or, um, so do, or the I, number I give you uh, by if, the end. If I paraphrase, it's, you know, it, in terms of how, how do you measure uncertainty? Do you measure it across those hundred um, 100 sim simulations, do you measure it with other uh, uncertainty elements like the, the error bar around um, you know, representation of different processes? Uh, so when, when we saw those box and whiskers, what was, what was the, the variation in there? Was it, all, it must have also been space? Uh, let's see, I don't know if Benjamin is frozen. Oh, okay, try again. Oh, I, I was good. Uh, I was offline, I think. Yeah. 
So can you can you say it again? It's yeah. Sorry. So with the question is, how do you measure uncertainty? Is it across the simulations? Is it? Uh, do you have any kind of larger error metrics about how well the model is performing, um, or or factors that might be left out, for example? Yes. So what to, we are doing is uh, we are trying first to validate the model uh, uh, across uh, against uh, observation uh, against uh, yield data and. Um, also, the, we, we are validating the, the, the way the, the, the model represents the relationship between climate uh, and, uh, and crop yield in the, in the, the observation. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have looking at uh, correlation between temperature and uh, observed yield, uh, rainfall and observed yield, and we are uh, trying to look at how crop models are doing that, and we are confident in the model that they, they could do that. But it's true that there is a high uncertainty, and I think uh, the, the AGMIP uh, ensemble uh, simulation uh, uh, you have shown uh, just before uh, uh, are a very good example of how we could measure example uh, this uh, uh, uncertainty. And I think using uh, different crop models, it's a way to, to, to sample uncertainty. It's really important to do that, actually. Yeah, so just, just to add on to that, within AGMIP, we have taken this study approach that, uh, that uh, Benjamin and, and his colleague Toshi Izumi from Japan have pioneered, um, and we are now bringing it to the larger Agni community. This is kind of what we do, which is when somebody has a nice study, we say, wouldn't it be great if all of the modelers did this, because now we could really understand the model uncertainty uh, component of that. So we are actually at our AgMIP global workshop later this month. Uh, we are bringing many modelers together to redo this protocol with more models and more sites in Africa so that we can start to, to factor that in. Uh, maybe one last question in the room before I want to make sure we give, leave Edmund some time as well. All right, I don't see a, a burning hand. So uh, Benjamin, thank you so much. I hope we get to, to listen also into to Edmund's talk. Um, so uh, our next speaker is Edmund Toten, who is uh, joining us uh, virtually.